Hey guys, don't make me put a carburetor on this tune port. I'm just crazy enough to do it. In this video, we run tune port injection on our 4.3 liter L98, but we also run a carburetor on top of the fuel injection. Does it work? Obviously the throttle body would be a big old vacuum leak and have this, so cardboard to the rest. Who here thinks the gasket's gonna hold up? Okay, we got our carburetor installed on our TPI. We got the throttle linkage working. We got the fuel hooked up. I think we have all of our vacuum lines closed. Let's start this thing up and see if it takes throttle. Then go to wow! Go to wide open throttle. Yeah! Yeah, let's start it up. Excellent, it is alive, and even he seems to take throttle. So I put a whole bunch of jet in this thing, it probably will be rich. Let's try to make a run, we gotta warm it up first, make a run and see if it works. Throttle pull, what's up? It's not making very much. It's not making very much power. And if you look in here, <laughs> you can kind of see fire. But on the plus side, everything's nice and cool from the fuel. Fuel cooling. It looks like what I thought was fire is actually the attachment for the airfoil just bouncing around in there. There's no fire. I can't see through there because I have my cardboard.
before trying to install the carburetor on our tune port setup, we had to establish a baseline with the tune port, and we ran the stock L98 tune port with a stock throttle body and the Holly HP and dialed everything in. This thing made 253 horsepower and 299 foot-pounds of torque. This was equipped with the aluminum heads, the L98 tune port, the 1.5 ratio stock rockers, and the L Super L98 cam with the small headers. So we wanted to run and establish a baseline before installing the carburetor on there because we wanted to find out how well it was before we could find out how well it is. And unfortunately, <laughs> here's what happened when we installed the carburetor. It, um, it went on, it idled fine, it uh, took throttle and sounded responsive, but unfortunately, as you can see at wide open throttle, it was not very happy. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you um, how we tried to tune this thing, but obviously in looking at that curve and listening to the motor, um, it's not something you were gonna tune around. What's going on in there is you have a lot of reflected waves and you have a, a lot of cylinder imba imbalances. You have a distribution nightmare going on in there. I wish we had a camera, I wish we could see inside the plenum while all this is happening because I'm sure it's just chaos in there. But you can tell that some of the some of the cylinders are not getting the same amount of air fuel and you know, obviously that carburetor position, we tried to center it as much as we could given where the runners all come together, but there's only so much you can do. Ideally, you probably would have um, a two barrel in front by one set of runners and a two barrel in the back by another set of runners, but this is what we did in installing our carburetor. You know, it worked fairly well, except at wide open throttle where we really wanted it to work. But here's what happened, and now I'll show you what happened. Uh, we tried to do some tuning and adjust this and find out if we could make it any better. Here's the air fuel curve on our tune port combination. And this might look like it's a little jaggedy, but that's only a half an air fuel point variation between the leanest and the richest point. And we'll put this into perspective when I show you on our carbureted combination. So this was the air fuel on the carbureted combination in red. <laughs> so that you can see there's a lot going on here. This is the same manifold. They're both tune port manifolds. One of them was run with EFI. And now the EFI in black is obviously, that's starting to look a lot flatter. And really it is, it's just, it's just, it's a, based on the scale. Now the scale is from 11.5 to 14.5. So that's looking a lot flatter. But if you look at the air fuel curve on the carbureted combination, it's all over the board. And obviously that's part of why it's not making power. So I thought, you know, let's try and see if we can richen this thing up because 14.4 at wide open throttle is obviously not good. And over here it's 14.2. So if we can richen the whole thing up, even this down here, even if that's in a tens, that'd be fine as long as these over here are in the safe range because you don't obviously don't want detonation to happen. You don't want it to be that lean. And I'll tell you why I was thinking that. Take a look at the air fuel on our carbureted combo when we ran the dual plate intake manifold. So now the carbureted combo is in red. You can see it started out actually very rich in, in the tens and then never got any, um, never got any leaner than 12.6. And I know what guys are thinking, yeah, it shouldn't be in the tens. That's, that's not making enough power. And ideally, I think you're right. But I could not take fuel away at only 3,300 RPM with a carburetor. There was no way for me to do that. And I've never seen anybody be able to do that. If they can, please come over here and show us um, and <laughs> let us know how it's possible to change the air fuel at 3,300 RPM and not somewhere else. But we had a rising air fuel curve with a carburetor and it seemed to work fairly well. I even tried adjusting it. We can do jetting and stuff. We did that with a carburetor, but it didn't want to go. Um, it actually didn't want to run any leaner than that at the top, it started losing power. So we richened it up to make sure that we had the right air fuel at the top. And this is how it came out. But in looking at how rich this is and how well it ran, um, I, I decided, hey, let's throw a bunch of fuel at our carbureted uh, system on top of the tune port and see what happens. So here's what happened when we added fuel to the you can see we basically just added uh, about seven or eight jets in the front and the back and we were able to make the thing a lot richer and the curve is much closer to what it was you know we have some waving coming around here but you can see it's no longer at 14.4 now at its leanest point it's at 12.4 and 12.3 over here at the beginning so i thought this was going to be a nice curve unfortunately <laughs> if we look at the power output this is our this is our tune port. 
that is our first uh, carbureted combination when it was lean. And here's what happened when we richened it up. It actually made even less power. So when we richened it up, things got worse. It was nice here at the beginning in red, but then it made less power all the way out, except at the very, very end. So there was a little bit of power change there with um, changing jets. We also tried changing uh, timing, and it does respond to timing. But since the timing was already what this other curve made with the fuel-injected motor, um, we tried varying it back and forth or above and below that. And it just, all we could do was lose power, basically. <laughs> so we didn't have any problem doing that. So we tried jetting, we tried timing, and unfortunately, our carbureted tune port motor was just not going to work out. Okay guys, what did we learn from this experiment? Putting a carburetor on top of our tune port L98 manifold. Well, we learned the following thing. Was it awesome? Did it make more power? Not so much. As it turns out, GM designed the tune port manifold with its long runners to promote torque production, and it does that very well. It was also designed to flow air and not fuel with a carburetor on top. So what does this all mean? Does it mean that fuel injection doesn't work? Does it mean that carburetors don't work? Does it mean that we won't try something silly like this again? That is a big no to all three of those. Just wait and see what I have coming up. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Give me more ideas for this kind of silliness. See you next time.